and gentlemen, thank you for standing by and welcome to this special live broadcast path boarding for cloud innovation. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. For the presentation, there will be a question and answer session. We will be asking questions on the telephone and online via WebEx. To ask a question via the phone, you will need to press star 1 on the telephone keypad and wait for your name to be announced. To submit a question online via WebEx, please type your questions in the Q&A box located in the panel on the right. If you're in the full screen mode, click on the floating tool panel located at the top of your screen and select the Q&A button from the drop-down menu. Please be advised that this conference is being recorded. I will hand the conference over to your first speaker today, Dipanshu Mittal. Thank you. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. I do understand we have people from different time zones. Uh, we took a little bit longer to get the call started because we see a lot more people on the web um, in comparison to people who actually dialed in. Uh, so uh, we had to send quite a few of reminders to actually dial in because people will not be able to listen uh, over the web. They have to dial in. So uh, with that, let's uh, get started without any further ado. Uh, my name is Dipanshu Mittal, as uh, the host uh, introduced. I am a Solution Strategy Director uh, in Asia-Pacific region and work closely uh, with our product management, local uh, uh, leadership, and uh, customer and partner community to uh, uh, help everyone understand Oracle's uh, strategy, direction, vision, uh, and uh, as well as pass our customers and partner community feedback to uh, product management as to uh, which direction we should continue to uh, develop and evolve our uh, uh, best of the breed solution. Six safe harbor statement, uh, even though uh, the presentation today is not very product specific or roadmap specific. Um, just um, any any conversation today is not a contractual conversation. Any specific terms and conditions of your uh, specific contract will drive uh, any any further uh, uh, contractual agreements of uh, your purchase decisions, buying decisions. With that, let's get started. Uh, today. Um, the way businesses are uh, conducted, the way we try to understand our consumer, the way we try to connect with our customers is rapidly changing. All things. Companies you see on the screen here are actually a pretty good example of how uh, the whole dynamic, uh, the whole ground is shifting in, in technology industry and how every single industry maybe was not very technology heavy or technology dependent in the past is quickly shifting to build their competitive advantage around technology. These companies really came out of nowhere and in a very short period of time, they actually beat all the industry leaders who have been there for decades and even for more than a century and uh, kind of made their place in the top players in the industry. One really common thing across all of these is innovation. But one thing across all of these is user experience, customer experience, better ways of connecting with their customers, understanding their customer better, empowering their customers more, being more transparent with their customers. That definitely pays off, and that's what definitely further sets the trend of the industry. And every company and every industry is now forced to relook at their IT strategy and uh, redefine it around innovation and uh, meeting the changing marketing demands and, uh, and dynamics. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I, I personally have had a unique privilege of uh, having met with some of the top executives in Tesla. Um, uh, CEO, uh, I have worked with him on, on a couple of projects and seen their factory with robots and fully automated uh, team. So, um, Good thing Tesla can do. Like uh, there's, there's several problems in in your engine, the Tesla car. They can actually fix remotely without even touching your car. 
right? Very heavily IoT-based, sensor-based, software-defined engine and in-car system. And, and overall interface, user interface of the car, the dash generally where you have all the uh, uh, radios and uh, uh, FMs and all of that, plus your navigation screen. If you see the in-car screen, uh, really it's almost of a size of a, of a uh, laptop. And literally, you can exchange that with your phone. Uh, you can literally use that as your phone. And you can bring that screen to your phone uh, and let it be navigation, uh, any other communication while you're in the car, any safety measures are so much easier to use and operate. And it's, again, besides just being energy efficient, that's a huge competitive advantage for them. Airbnb, Uber, Netflix, they, they all have very similar traits of innovating, uh, providing better user experience to customers, and, and the results are uh, self-evident. The technologies are being adapted at the speed. Technologies are being adapted. It's already uh, self-evident. Things like electricity, telephone, radio, television, took more than 25 years to really uh, become very popular and uh, as a part of uh, most of the household. The, uh, things like uh, PC, cell phone, internet, they took much lesser time. Cell phone, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and you can see the decreasing trend, how the technologies, how market is now so trained and got so used to uh, of uh, uh, coming across these new technologies that adopting them, the change management, is now not so much of a problem. And as a result, our consumer has become more demanding because simply, they have more options. If you write that uh, unique experience to them, they will just simply move on. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, where Oracle stands in this entire ecosystem. Uh, we have been uh, the leading uh, software company uh, for almost past uh, four decades. We have $7.7 .7 billion uh, in, in revenue, 430,000 customers in 175 countries. And, uh, the facts you can see that we have a large partner community, uh, lot of employees, and uh, a lot of implementation consultants, and a lot of uh, system, a lot of uh, developers and engineers that are efficient in uh, Oracle technology to uh, be out uh, with your idea. Um, one of the biggest things I would like to really emphasize on here is the R and D investment. Oracle, as a software company or engineered systems company, are now a cloud company, actually a combination of all of that. Um, we spent highest dollar rather than to any other company in the industry. A couple of uh, software companies are actually uh, bigger than us, but uh, when it comes to R&D, when it comes to innovation, when it comes to understanding our customers' requirements, when it comes to providing a new functionalities, new features in an innovative way at rapid pace, we come to another close to uh, spend the kind of money we do on R and D to accomplish that goal. Uh, at first, uh, our cloud uh, business is going at a 68% growth rate, which again uh, one of the highest uh, growth rate in the industry, and uh, we already have uh, roughly. 20 cents plus uh, data centers globally uh, serving our customer or cloud offering. Actually, as for this year, we have plans to, uh, I think, some down another 17, 18 data centers across the world that we are adding. And that, that will just uh, will continue down that path. That's just the market to get closer to our customers in different countries and uh, to provide them faster speed despite of local bandwidth issues and, uh, and things like that. So already in our uh, rather shorter period of cloud journey in comparison to some of the other uh, cloud players, we already have 25,000 plus cloud customers. And we have 29 million plus daily active cloud users. We serve our cloud in 35 different languages in, uh, in 135 uh, countries. So the data uh, speaks for itself, and uh, it shows our commitment, and it shows 
uh, our customer community's uh, acceptability and uh, uh, receptiveness to our offering. And that is a result of uh, our commitment to the quality. This is the tool you have known for the time. Uh, we are engineered systems, software uh, and hardware working together. Um, company where we have very fine-tuned every of hardware and software in your IT architecture, like the application tier, the middleware tier, any parts of middleware like development, integration, content management, websites, and th uh, analytics, security, and things like that. Let it be a database, your operating system, virtual machine, server, and uh, storage. We have spent so much time and effort in our R&D to integrate them for you, so you don't have to spend all this money and time, and you can address business requirements much faster. We have brought the same ideology to the cloud. Um, so we are, again, the most and best integrated cloud solution across the layers of cloud. That is uh, the infrastructure uh, as a service, the platform as a service, uh, it could be a SaaS or a data as a service. We provide pre-integrated solution across the category. While our solutions are pre-integrated with each other, they are not limited to that. We always build our products on open standards. As a result, uh, we deliver uh, um, our products uh, with equal quality and, and best results in a very heterogeneous environment where you as a customer uh, want to have choice to fit different pieces together as it makes more sense for your business. So, um, uh, software as a service that's rather uh, mature. Uh, it's not necessarily at its, at its maturity, but definitely SAS has been a concept, well-received concept out there for a very time. Uh, recently, in the past couple of years, however, uh, the trend of SaaS adoption has gone up very rapidly. The concept of delivering everything as a service and consuming everything as a service is definitely catching up and driving uh, some of the uh, significantly increased SaaS action across industries and across uh, the globe. Um, we, as Oracle, we provide all kind of SaaS applications. Let it be uh, your financials, your ERP, supply chain, human capital management, um, asset management, it's, uh, your customer experience applications like CRM, marketing, uh, services, and things like that. And uh, we provide uh, a lot of uh, industry applications that are unique to your business, unique to your industry. Uh, and all of these provide uh, in, a, in our SaaS platform. Um, we are well known for uh, security, as security is generally considered to be one of the top concerns for most companies that are looking at their cloud strategy. Oracle has been an undisputed leader in the space of security uh, for a very long time, and continue to deliver that commitment in the cloud business. We know security better than anyone else and we do deliver on that in, in the cloud. And we'll talk a little bit more about our security strategy and vision uh, uh, furthermore briefly. This is going to be kind of uh, most of our first area for today's presentation, platform as a service. Basically, thing which is uh, not uh, ready to consume uh, application and uh, that offer you more than just uh, a cloud of hardware and uh, operating system and network. Um, so anything that gives you some software that you can further develop to a specific use for your business uh, is platform as a service. And just like our on-prem business, we have the most comprehensive portfolio of uh, software. Uh, let it be database or different variations of database and database management options. Let it be application servers, application development tools. Um, let it be uh, business intelligence and analytics, big data, IoT, uh, mobility, uh, content ma management, websites, uh, portals, security, data integration, application integration, 
uh, been the area, and we provide the most comprehensive suite of offerings uh, in the, uh, our traditional on-premises business as well as in the cloud business. One of our unique positioning that uh, pretty much no other company can really claim in the market out there is uh, in most of these areas, we provide you the exact same software in on-prem and exact same software in the cloud. So you, as a customer, has a choice between you want to use on-prem, uh, it makes more sense for a business to use that product uh, on your own process in your own data center, or in the cloud, or kind of in a hybrid model. And that's such as a service, which is, again, uh, now very uh, known and well-received, well-adapted space. And uh, yes, the company like AWS, Azure, Oracle, uh, had acquired a pretty significant uh, market share from the uh, traditional data center model. So our products are built on open standards, and uh, we provide same uh, products in our on-prem business as well as cloud business. So the customer has a choice to adapt them on-premises, uh, cloud, or in a hybrid model. Um, in a lot of countries, though, um, there is still a lot of resistance uh, to go to cloud. There are a lot of industries because of the type of the data, the sensitivity of the data, government or even uh, industry has not really opened up to cloud quite yet. So that's something for you as well. Um, we can actually ship a cloud machine to you, which is uh, typically uh, built on our public cloud infrastructure, on our public cloud architecture. And uh, you can actually take it and run it behind your firewall. So you can get all the benefits uh, you want to leverage from cloud uh, without worrying about uh, the security and or the uh, Governance, governance, and the regulation uh, issues. And this is where a big proportion of that $5.2 billion uh, R&D budget goes into. You stay one step ahead of the innovation to innovate and to get, catch up to innovations that are done by others. So things like artificial intelligence, blockchain, autonomous software, Internet of Things, human interface, machine learning, all of these things, we continually keep revising and enhancing our offering with these uh, best of breed uh, features and uh, functionality for our customers. Now, let's go back to uh, talking about what does the market require today, what does the customer want today, and what do our uh, if it's from IT department, this is our business, our LOB tech spectrum. Consider the quickly changing uh, market dynamics. Uh, today, we require continuous innovation, and uh, continually we need to differentiate ourselves from our competition. Uh, so we have more top of the mind awareness from our customers. Uh, we need to make these changes quickly and still be open to the fact that by the time this change is effective, uh, another change might come in that we'll need to implement. Um, we need more innovation-centric budget models uh, within the company. Uh, the tools we need uh, to deploy need to be simple, easy. I mean, traditional models don't work here, right? If uh, we still continue to operate that model where when there's uh, any new project, we will uh, spend about a month and a half, two months in buying and getting the hardware delivered, then loading software on it, testing all the operating system software, everything together, and for at least like three, four months of that cycle, even before the project could get started, right? We don't have that kind of time left anymore. We need simple and easy to adapt tools that are simple, simpler to integrate around with other applications internally and externally. We need to, to deliver this experience on mobile devices and kind of devices uh, for that matter. And uh, we need to adapt these tools is still with a strategic vision in place. But yeah, it's, it's not just a short-term investment. It's a platform that allows us to compete and stay ahead of the game in the longer term. It should not be an investment that actually becomes a roadblock and has adverse impact on us in the future. So 
we have to innovate, and that while we have to shift our focus to innovation and better understanding and delivering experience to our customers, um, what happens to all the investment we have made in existing applications, in our ERPs, in our uh, CX applications, in our e-commerce website, and uh, our business applications, and what not? Generally, a typical application project, depend on the company size, is generally a very, very expensive project. A new implementation sometimes even easily takes five to six percent, uh, even up to seven eight percent percent of a company's uh, annual uh, annual revenue. Right, a very big proportion. Probably, unless it can be written off over the period of years, uh, companies won't even want to spend that much money on just one ERP implementation. The kind of investment that has been committed, while it's still in the process of writing that off in our books, and that write-off is going to go on for another three, four, five years, um, what happens to that? So what are our options to adapt all this innovation by our existing applications that we already deployed are not designed that way? options. Um, we say no to the change. We stay we are. But actually, when I was uh, I was looking for a nice uh, icon or picture for the, for the no change, and I came across a couple of quotes like, uh, if you don't change anything, nothing will change. Now, when I understand the sentiment of uh, that quote, um, in our words, it's actually the way around. If you can't stand up and change something, things will start changing against you. Your competition will make that change. Your competition will get ahead, and customer will definitely move on. That will definitely have an adverse impact if we don't make an effort and change how we are doing business today. Um, the other option is let's customize what we have. Now, yes, customization is, is, is an option, no doubt about that, and it has been there for a long time. We all, I think, understand how budget-consuming uh, it could be. Now, let me give you an example. I was working with this uh, pretty large retailer in the uh, United States, and uh, this customer had about 10,000 stores all over the country. Uh, they bought an Oracle application, uh, which is a retail point-of-sale system, uh, 1998. And I was with this customer in about uh, 2013. About 10 years later. Uh, what I did while I was working with them is this additional application they purchased in 1998, they have never been able to upgrade it. Because they had to customize it so heavily. If the original application had 200 tables in it, their one of the application actually had 1,200 tables in it. So the original application isn't anymore. They had to make those changes because business demanded that. Business required them. Now, what became a roadblock for them is now uh, they can't upgrade. So the functionality is actually provided by the vendor. Uh, they cannot actually, um, uh, they cannot embrace them. They cannot leverage them. Um, they can apply any security patches, bug fixes that uh, vendor that Oracle release after they purchase. So are vulnerable. The application is vulnerable to breaches because security patches are missing. Um, and it just slows down the business. Every time they have a new project, uh, a new enhancement, new customization, they have to go through a very extensive cycle of uh, understanding its impact on the rest of the application or the customization. Very extensive. And when I, I was actually working with them, at that point, they decided to, uh, to make the change. They pretty much had to decide to re-implement the entire uh, application. And at that point, it was a $40 million project spread of two and a half year time period. To re the same application, which if they kept agile for a period of time, they could have actually reduced that quite significantly. Now, another option is a uh, uh, SaaS application. Yes, yeah, uh, that's a great option, and it really depends company to company, situation to situation, how easy or difficult or economical or uh, sensible it is 
for you to actually um, leap from an application uh, to, to the cloud application. Uh, but is that the complete solution? That question, because yes, you will uh, get the SaaS application, but uh, bear in mind that uh, your flexibility to optimize it, again, you, you have been in this field, you know very well that no matter what and how good application you buy, business requirements are still going to be relatively unique, and there will be some degree of customization needed, and that's very, very, very highly likely. I have seen barely any exceptions to that uh, in, my, in my professional career so far. So you will end up customizing it. Uh, in cloud, uh, SaaS, not a whole lot of vendors actually provide you the right architecture or even an option to customize the application. So uh, basically, you are dependent on their ability to innovate. You're not addressing business requirement uh, as they are coming from your LOB. You're actually waiting for the vendor to realize that uh, they need to come up with such functionalities. The vendors don't think that way. They will leave functionalities that are more commonly applicable to broader customer segments. So the requirement that could be very unique to your business, you will still need to think of that. So, uh, and then customization, uh, it, it starts to become a little bit of a complex story. So this is what we recommend. And uh, um, in, in another two, three minutes, uh, I'm done uh, with this part. Uh, my colleague from uh, Evosis, uh, Shabir, he will talk uh, a little bit about some of the examples of uh, some of such projects they have done with a lot of customers. But this is what Oracle advocates for. Um, instead of further customizing your on-prem applications and your SaaS applications, build these additional functionalities, those additional processes, those additional features and uh, innovations in an attraction layer. It's easy to use, uh, easy to adapt, easy to, buy, easy to integrate, Cloud platform with to deploy those changes, address that market at the speed of the changes that are happening. We quickly develop those new mobile apps, where you can quickly develop, develop those chatbots, quickly come up with new reports, new types of reports. Um, now you're absolutely comfortable that it's very tight and very secure. You can easily integrate it, you can easily open up APIs. You can fetch the right data wherever you need that data, and, and things like that, right? So Unit Open Platform gives you all the options to build those processes, those additional functionalities, and just simply integrate them with your existing application. That's your applications will be more agile. It will be simpler to upgrade them, simpler to adapt new functionalities and patches released by application vendors. It's simpler to make a decision to move on from that to a SaaS application because now you have your innovation independent of that. Now your platform of innovation where you can develop, build whatever you want very quickly without depending on, on, a, on an application vendor. This is your perfect mix of the strategy where you have to continue to leverage your existing investment in on-term application, having to worry about uh, having to move to fast to getting in a value out of it. This is the option to actually um, further uh, improvise the experience of your SaaS application and not limiting yourself by features and innovations provided by the vendor and keep the control of your vision, of your business's vision and business requirement in your hands. So, gentlemen, this is a platform of innovation Oracle offers, and Oracle offers the most comprehensive set of options for you. Um, and uh, like I said, my colleague in a minute will talk a little bit more about that. Um, in the interest of time, since we started a bit late, um, I should actually conclude at this point. Uh, I wanted to walk you through some of our uh, security uh, philosophy. Um, I'll be sharing a slide with you, uh, and we can share more material around that with you. We take a very comprehensive uh, approach to, uh, to security. 
let it be uh, just your data, let it be uh, the access of, uh, and role management, who is accessing what and how, uh, let it be the gathering all the data around uh, what is going on in your overall on-prem and cloud environment, who is trying to access what, how to actively detect that, how to prevent that, even having to first analyze the situation, uh, and how to respond to that. We, we take a very, very comprehensive approach to covering all different angles of any potential breaches to affect your business. Uh, with that, gentlemen, I would like to hand over to my uh, colleague from Evosis. Uh, Evosis is a longtime Oracle partner. They have presence in 18 different countries. They're very uh, subtle in uh, Asia Pacific region. The global company uh, with presence in EMEA, US, APAC, and AMZ, but they have a very big custom base in APAC. Uh, we have 840 plus Oracle Cloud customers today, um, and uh, they, they deal across the ERP, that's the CRCX, business television, from as a service, and a lot of different uh, set of options and options Oracle provides. Uh, so, Evosis has been a great partner, and it's my uh, pleasure to introduce Shabir. Uh, to further discuss some of the use cases uh, uh, of what they have done for customers. Hey, Pancho. Uh, Every last thing can continue. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah. Any other one? Uh, for introduction uh, about the hosts and myself, uh, the solutions uh, the hosts that we offer on our platform. Sharing my screens shortly. Um, Operator, would you please pass the control to uh, Shabir? I am, for some reason, uh, having a hard time doing that. Thank you. Bye. Right. So, thank you for the introduction. So, as uh, a bunch of uh, us, is a global company. Uh, we are present across the globe, and we are present in. In APAC and United States. Uh, we have enabled 840 customers to cloud journey. Those many of them were on premise, many of them using e suite, and we have helped them to move their workloads, move their uh, enterprise applications onto cloud to transform for e suite to Oracle platforms and all fast. Have uh, a leading firm for Oracle Pass solutions, we have built uh, 25 plus passes which are available on Oracle Marketplace. Uh, we have those customer references where we have the Pass solutions and they have been very successful in utilizing Oracle platform for innovation. And the journey has been a successful one. Now, as you know, innovation is the need of the hour. There will come like Kodak, uh, Block Videos, or record companies who were W3, and Kodak was one of the pioneer companies who was uh, known in the history for Kodak, Kodak films. Uh, they, were, they were developing films to capture images and pictures, and they were uh, a great during those times. You know, uh, photograph, just, you just click it and get a printout of a photograph on the camera. Got a camera. So those were things that were very innovative on those days. Somehow, companies did not accept the chance to innovate, to look into the future. So what happened? Those companies replaced. The technology innovated itself. I mean, new and new solutions came up, and those things got replaced. So by getting digital cameras, and then by Android and smartphones and iPhones. 
the recording companies got replaced by Netflix. Now we don't use, we don't go to a video store to buy a DVD or a cassette. We use, we just Netflix and see what we want. Uh, we don't go and buy CDs and MP3s now. Listen music online. And when their taxis are going to get already created, we're using our taxis to Uber and some other providers. So, you know, the need of the other. How uh, most of the organization are using ERP in our end offices in way of the other. So they might be having any one of these uh, application. So they can have an article ERP cloud, have a payment cloud, supply chain, customer service, DX, and so on. So the solutions are uh, as far as the service, any software vendor provider might be providing to you, or even Oracle uh, SaaS is providing you all the solutions as a standard application. This specific is funded for uh, an industry or an organization. So, most of the SaaS applications are not enough to address business need, to address your business specific. So, what does they need? They need a, a secure, stable, state of the art application. Uh, facilitate their investment for long short term goal. Portal Cloud Solutions provide you that, that in past and in past. And implement that. You understand your business, you understand your line of uh, your LOB, you understand your process, and can help you accelerate that process. So, if does that thing. The business specific requirements, finding them on paths, help them to uh, replace their current wide of you know IT services and to move from non premise workload to an global based workload where the customer realize a rapid ROI in a very short period of time. Thank you, uh, Oracle Pass Solutions, where, uh, which are powered by Oracle Cloud. And these things are uh, how this Oracle platform helps you to build, uh, to extend, to connect, and securely application to an application or to a custom business logic or to a custom business process that your line of business might be used having. So, what's up with you is a tailored user experience. You can SaaS as per company branding. You can extend your SaaS on SaaS platform. In SaaS, you can have your own workflow configuration as per your business and extend that, that through post cloud or processes available on Oracle SaaS. Apart from that, Oracle platform supports your existing premise application, any other provider. You can do those existments through Oracle Pass and to build applications on mobile or web or anything. And you can build analytics on top of your existing investments to best what is reporting out of it. Connect your existing investments and uh, applications to a pass integrate solutions. So it's a wide range of offering platform that helps you to innovate your existing environment. To implore uh, SaaS, that on tailoring your SaaS is to improve your end user experience, your user satisfaction. You can you tailor bring your SaaS. You can create your own custom data fields to capture values. So the idea here is to extend your SaaS to do capabilities. Normal a standard out of the box application might not provide. How do you change your SaaS experience? You can brand it, you can brand it using Oracle Pass platform. So what, do, so what are the things that you can do on Oracle platform? You can build your business logic outside of SaaS and extend it uh, with the experience as a SaaS, Oracle SaaS solution might offer. Extend it on your mobile application, on custom mobile application, 
which uh, will integrate seamlessly into your Oracle SAP and data flow Oracle SAP and pass will be seamless and secure. You can win a fixed report drop of your data residing in SAS and in PaaS. And you can exchange content and uh, extend your business processes on a platform. Uh, these are offerings uh, on Oracle platform. We provide pre built applications, which are 20 plus point solutions uh, of uh, vertical specific application. So there are some industries uh, with respect to constant uh, real estate or in healthcare industry where they require a specific extent to be uh, built on existing, you know, to build their businesses. So we have those applications built as a part of our offering. And do custom extensions on SaaS. Uh, so we build custom solutions as per the business requirement. We keep those uh, applications with third party systems to fetch data and exchange uh, information. The adaptive innovation of artificial intelligence and chatbots on top of your SaaS or your existing applications. And we your operators or devices to Internet of Things, monitor, to analyze, and to take corrective actions on your business assets. So these are the offerings, resources. Now, this resources add value. The EOS add values of expertise on your industry knowledge. So experts team who have been uh, working over the channels and more on specific industry use cases. We have a built solution on best practices and policies as per the industry standards. Uh, you can name it healthcare, uh, construction, manufacturing, and all these extensions you have built are on Oracle platform. So Oracle platform powers uh, build solutions which can extend your business line. I have to very quickly. So it's very short. You can build solutions and extensions very shortly and quickly and deploy it and starting it in your day-to-day -day business. Now, how do you extend your SaaS application? So your SaaS applications, uh, it's very simple to extend. Just deploy that on platform and create your link on SaaS dashboard. You start extending those applications directly from here. And you don't have to worry about the single sign-on. It has got uh, obligation from your SaaS application to your pass. It is out of the box and signed on. You can buy those solutions of pass from our marketplace. These are people that exchange built by various partners. You can access them on the marketplace and simply deploy that on your SaaS. It also supports known SaaS platforms, as I said earlier. It supports your existing uh, investment and extend them on platform as well. Apart from that side of it, you can build your mobile applications, chatbots to uh, help your end employees or your end customers to connect with your business in a very quick way. You can build mobile applications using Max Mobile, Max mobile Services, where you can grab building applications just like drag and drop features and your applicants in deployment in a couple of days. Build intelligent chatbots, which will learn and you can train them to answer FAQs and train them to give them analytics, reports, customers to get data from your backend systems through chatbots. And opens a lot of uh, channels to, uh, to your business users. You can analytics on top of your customer experience that so-and-so customer is asking me for so-and-so question and how more information my customers are looking for more frequently. For example, a uh, customer can ask for uh, uh, a loan request. You can check the loan eligibility. For example, if you are a bank and you're offering loan or you're offering any other services as a bank, customers can get donation to a chatbot and you can analyze that. What are my customers more interested in? Offerings from uh, EOSs back to industry. So, Inventions for engineering construction, uh, as soon called workforce scheduler, managing your uh, construction questions. We have real estate solutions for property management and leasing. So these are solutions 
build Oracle platform and extend your uh, business capabilities on the of the uh, financial and insurance sectors for uh, the letter of credit, letter of guarantee. We have several solutions, for example, uh, any, any business organization will need, for example, say self services for HR, uh, a business job request for expense claim. So, the all D2D functions, any business needs uh, to function. So, the workforce solution can manage shifts for nurses and doctors. The desk solution, which helps to maintain your uh, internal services, uh, your support services within the organization, and so on. So, about all the solution, how to extend uh, Oracle SaaS applications. Uh, so, we have workforce scheduler extending, XM, we have smart desk solution extending your supply chain modules. Uh, we have solutions that are extending your financials, solutions that are extending the capabilities of your fusion projects, and so on. So, these are some of the key solutions that we have built, and they are extending the capabilities of uh, Oracle SaaS. Think about a use case uh, to go a bit deeper on what does these solutions do. So let's talk about your workforce scheduler solution for your workforce management. Now, most organizations, you know, feel challenges. They are having multiple different business units. Uh, a large amount of staff, they need to maintain this staff schedule. Who comes at what time and what shifts, who are in day shifts, how many are in night shifts. So most of the organizations face challenges in managing their scheduling of the shifts and no visibility that if they are lacking a certain amount of resources, they are understaffed, they are overstaffed, uh, do I need my resources, more employees or more uh, workers to be deployed on, on which entity, on which building, and there are different that required with your payroll system to pay them on the overtime or the undertime and you need to compliance on top of it. So those are different business challenges that are most organizations face. So workflow solution addresses those challenges. You can manage shifts, you can create auto shifts based on uh, a particular template. Uh, for example, a particular hospital may require uh, a particular distance or particular uh, positions on particular seasons. For example, say if there is a, an outbreak of a disease, you need more doctors or you need more nurses. So you can bring those templates, you can sh schedule your the nurses effectively. Say for an, an, uh, an, an support organization on a hospital, or let's say a hotel, a hotel you need uh, more waiters or more attendants on particular holiday season. So that is our solution comes in picture and helps them to schedule to uh, shift time, they track the stuff on what time did they come, with time did they go, how much uh, do I need to pay over time, how much I need to deduct. And so these are all pre integrated with your Oracle uh, XCM uh, or your pay solutions, or even with projects in case of a construction industry where you're, you're tracking your construction workers come site. So, so it has a mobile application along with it, so you can. So you don't have to worry about the bar integration where they will come and do scanning of the thumb and uh, capture the attendance or it, you know, manual attendance as well. So the mobile application on Android and iOS where they can just go and, in and check out their uh, attendance whenever they are within an organization location. It's based on our geolocation tagging and we accept their function and punch out. That's uh, workforce schedule solution with powered by Oracle Pass uh, helps them to manage their shift and staff. So what it will in, it will result in more productive staff. You can you can reduce your over scheduling, or you can reduce your overtime, and you know not to about those integrated biometric or your payroll systems because all out of the box. Now uh, we talk about smart desk solution that we have on Oracle Pass. Uh, available on marketplace. Uh, most organization face challenges on most organization have in-house assets. Let's say uh, a table or chair or a fan or an AC or a lift per se. So there are many assets which we need for maintenance, be corrective or preventive. So to those maintenance 
the motivation will lead uh, a, a dashboard uh, as per solution where they can track all their assets, how they're placed, where they are placed, and they need that developer to the assets has been completed on time. And the application face challenges on that, that there are delays in maintenance, there are delays in uh, the services to complete their action. All challenges are addressed in smarter solution. You can uh, use your assets how are you working. For example, say uh, a building is having four floors and each floor is having so many assets. So all those hierarchy you can manage into this solution in a graphical way. And you can upload pictures, you can upload geolocations on those assets. Then you track the work order, an employee can request this, let's say uh, my A is not working, and then a technician gets assigned to it, a technician performs the job, a uh, technician is not performing the job, an employee can escalate that, and so on. So all that cycle of you know, uh, request to resolve uh, of a uh, work request is managed by smarter solution. So this small solution, but it does address very uh, area of most organization phase in how. Now, thinking about use case of structure industry. So, uh, most construction industries uh, are working with subcontractors to manage their projects. For example, say a okay, construction is building a, a bridge, so you must subcontract certain parts of the building of that bridge to subcontractors. And there are in most of the solutions to handle those subcontractors, like how much work they have done, uh, how much work they are supposed to do. How much payment do I have to give to my subcontractors on completion? And they need to track how much work confirmation was done. And calculations, deduction, and so on. Contracting solution address is the challenge. You can you manage our subcontractors, this work, penalties uh, on scope of work, and so on. And you can <coughs> pay them for the work solution. It's been integrated with your fusion project and extend those capability of fusion projects on subcontracting. So the value addition that comes out of the solution is that track your subcontractors, you can increase transparency between your subcontractor and yourself. In other places, you can get a potential analysis of your profit or loss incurred on certain uncertain changes on by the subcontractor. Sorry. Extending that subcontracting part, so the solution called absent search in customer portal. So we extend this subcontracting solution to your subcontractor to pass to fill the information. You can have the whole engine on top of it. You can change request. The customer is uh, doing some work and yes, I that some additional scope of work has to be done. Request can be handled to these absent solutions. Now, there's a bank facility solution. Where, uh, most organization, uh, financial organization, who are the multiple suppliers of uh, in their finances, like how many letter of credit they might have given, how many loan bank guarantee they might have given and long-term loans. So track all those uh, in the battery solution. There is balance, you know, that more in my face on what is the cash they might have or what is the finances they might have in common period of time. And they might face uh, a penalty or a non-compliance from banking in order that the letter of credit expires or letter of guarantee expires. But it expires. So the challenges where uh, organizations face Difficulty managing and tracking. So, in bank facility helps them to record their letter of credit, letter of guarantee, bank finances, and member suppliers apply can uh, generate invoices to suppliers based on this letter of guarantee. So, they they can save the penalties or uh, they can get a proper forecast of uh, the future finances they might need for banks. So uh, to address the problem, the key agenda is what the customer wants. 
customer need a path solution to address this. Customer might need an infrastructure. Customer may need a local platform and a partner to do this. So, providing the key to success uh, is the need what customer will need. So, an industry can have a particular requirement, and those business requirements can address innovatively using the platform and the services. So this is where uh, US will add value to existing customers and the future customers that uh, we are engaged run the development, we can customer needs, we collaborate with them, uh, the business knowledge, we have skills, uh, we empower the client, uh, the customer to take decisions based on uh, the solutions which we can provide and solutions which are available with the client. Uh, we help them to standardize the business processes uh, with the most of user experience and uh, more business out of their existing investments. So these are a quick snapshot of our existing past customers who have worked, uh, who DOCs have worked with and uh, implemented successfully past solutions, which I used uh, in previous slides. Uh, customers have adopted those technologies and our business and value to their end employees and the end customers. Uh, from the website side, uh, and thank you all for listening. Uh, operator, we open for. Thank you, Kabir. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question via the phone, you will need to press star one on the telephone keypad and wait for the name to be announced. To get a question online, the WebEx, please type your questions in the Q and A box located in the panel on the right. If you are in a full screen mode, click on the floating tool panel located at the top of your screen and select the Q&A button from the drop-down menu. Star 1 to ask a phone question. The conference back to the presenters um, to, um, for the next question. So I have a question from uh, Mr. Jenny Ramakrishnan. Uh, Operating and audio questions will be asked to answer the question. Okay, uh, we'll continue with the audio questions. Your first question comes from a line of, of Jana Kwan. Please ask a question. Uh, uh, are you able to hear me? Go ahead. Okay, the question for uh, Dipanshu. Uh, I believe that Dipanshu has shared uh, his experience with uh, 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 you know, with the, the working with the retail clients, right? So regarding this, I have a quick question: that how long one should retain the current version before moving on to the upgraded version, instead of spending time and money on customization? So, what's your recommendation? To so, um, it, it really depends. There are a lot of different things that actually drive an upgrade, right? Uh, first of all, how long is the upgrade process itself? And uh, how many resources are required? Does your time and the schedule and everything uh, allows that or not? Um, so that, that kind of drives it for most of the customers. Uh, however, um, I think one of the things I was suggesting to begin with is what makes these upgrades more complex and more resource intensive is customization. If we simplify that part, if we bring those customizations in an abstraction layer, uh, generally just pushing a standard upgrade and patches uh, will become a much easier exercise. Uh, just bear in mind that uh, the updates and patches have uh, a particular schedule that's pre-published. Uh, pre generally, minor releases uh, every few months, and major releases every uh, 
uh, from one year to a couple of years to once in three years, depending on the uh, software. Uh, so I think they should be upgraded, uh, let's say, if this year, if uh, L 2018, uh, a new release came out, new came out, some companies, considering the functionality, want to be immediately ahead of that. They even want to be a beta customer and want to adapt. What I have seen is majority of the customers want to wait until a new release is bugged out and uh, uh, all the bug fixes and patches, a lot of them are taken care of. So they really wait for a year or so and then apply the upgrade. Please, for an upgrade, uh, you should want not wait for more than two versions. Generally, if you are on version uh, X.1 and uh, the vendor is already on X.4, I, I think you are quite behind and, and you are at risk in terms of security vulnerabilities and adapting functionality. And complicating your upgrade cycle furthermore. Uh, X.1 up to X.3 is still generally um, understandable and acceptable. Some vendors generally give you a path to upgrade straight from the older version to the latest version. But really, mostly you end up you having you end up having to upgrade version by version. You know that that's a very loaded question with a lot of different aspects that are considered an upgrade project. But generally, I would say within one year of the news coming out. Uh, or never being behind more than uh, two versions. Does that answer your question? question? comes from a line of the unknown layer. Please ask your question. Uh, sir, you are able to hear me? Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, as I have seen that you are providing various past solutions to banking, to subcontract management, to engineering, etc. Suppose that in I companies, lots of companies and startups are coming for digital marketing and even for project management. So, is Oracle past solution provide some modules for digital marketing-based companies and uh, project management for the type of facilities? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's answer that. Uh, so, what I can provide that is, it is provide you a platform where you build uh, any custom solution as per your business, custom business need. So, for example, you see the business need is around digital marketing. So, uh, there are some SaaS solutions available uh, on the cloud with you to improve your digital marketing. Let's say uh, there is a learning management cloud, there is a customer engagement cloud. So those are some of our solutions which are already available that address your business needs. Mm -hmm. And after what all the past can do is you can explore the capabilities of your current existing applications. So you might be using uh, some of the tools for the marketing, maybe Salesforce or etc. You can uh, the capabilities uh, you want and business requirement and you can them on uh, the market path. And integrate with your system because it is. So, that that answers my question, sir. And uh, if you uh, and if you, uh, give me one answer, I want to like ask you one more question, please. Sure. Yeah. My another question to you is that, sir, as we know that lots of companies like SAP, Amazon have their own. That analytics-based uh, packages, etc. So what is special thing in your analytics part which gives you distinction and uh, separate head as compared to existing companies? I want to know specialties and special features about your analytics. Okay. Uh, so all the plans are less on device. All the cloud. This is a financial analytics solution which is uh, built for uh, Platform which I can build on the mind of business intelligence. And this stream of business intelligence has been uh, in taken to time and sort of the market leaders uh, when it comes to analytics. Now, 
how it differentiated from others uh, from the business cash uh, because the analytics report of testing data will be so that I challenge uh, which organization or other vendors might not have. So, for example, say if you have an actual sheet of data, uh, it's having uh, your uh, financial transaction that you have your digital sales transactions of the last 10 years. Okay, you just need to upload that actual sheet. And analytics cloud, you can see the topic of UIs that you might need to see. That's the So, that's how quick and how smart solutions uh, for the Okay, thank you so much for your answer, sir. Actually, uh, if you don't mind, let me quickly add uh, another small uh, thing to that. I think the completeness of uh, vision and completeness of uh, flexibility and choice for you as a customer is the most important part. I think in coming years, uh, and that, that moment has already started, I, I think the data that the world had has, 90% uh, uh, of world data has created in the last two years, and doubling every two years, right? So kind of report uh, companies want or uh, LOBs actually require uh, kind of insight they're looking for is constantly changing. There are a lot of vendors out there that create data models based on existing requirements, but by the time you have that, you will have new requirements, right? So it's, it's, um, you, while you can leverage those data models, it certainly saves you uh, some cost and everything, you do need an open platform where uh, you can have the flexibility of creating any type of report you want for any source of data in any kind of business model let it be IoT-related data, let it be big data, social data, sensor data, uh, internal, external data. You should be able to gather that data quickly, uh, either in a data mass format or data warehouse format, or even just directly getting data from the source, and spin up a new kind of report, configure a new kind of report very quickly based on the changing uh, marketplace. Just going for existing data models, is not sufficient anymore because what insights you need is constantly changing. Yeah, thank you, sir. Question is a follow-up question from Kuraman. Please ask your question. Yeah, sure. uh, uh, regarding uh, you know the platform, which platform and application provide room for standard functionality, and which application provide room for custom solution? Uh, because I'm seeing the new to cloud, so between uh, the uh, PaaS and PaaS, so which provide custom solutions and which provide the, uh, the standard function uh, standard solutions. Sure. Um, so as far as SaaS is concerned, right, SaaS is obviously anything which is supposed to be a very function-specific, uh, an out-of-the-box solution that you can use as it is. As Oracle is concerned, um, to be able to extend that, to be able to enhance the functionality, we actually uh, do integrate that with our uh, PaaS portfolio and give you that platform um, to, to further innovate and extend and uh, build those additional features. Uh, from PaaS standpoint, again, by definition, PaaS is supposed to be an open platform that you can further develop and tweak it to your business requirements. However, um, based on artificial intelligence, machine learning, based on autonomous uh, concepts, um, the kind of features and options we have provided to you very significantly reduce your go-to-market time. So previously, if um, integration project, for example, let's say you have uh, integration uh, or, uh, between Salesforce and Oracle Financial, or SAP for this matter. Um, generally, between uh, getting all the hardware and software and deploying this uh, solution and implementing it and testing it, 
I think introduction is, is, is really a long cycle. Could be it's months, uh, depending on the complexity, could be more. Uh, this cloud, you can literally just drop an adapter which already exists there for Salesforce, drop an adapter that, all, that already exists there for uh, SAP, and get that integration going in production in less than a week's time. Right? So when it comes to providing a standard option in path, that standard is actually the ease of use uh, of the tools that are provided in PaaS. But by definition, that is something that you need to further evolve for a specific business function uh, for, for, for your business and for your users, for your use case, right? They have partners like Evosis and, uh, um, and several others who actually do a really good job of uh, based on their interactions with customers and their uh, uh, analysis of repeat coming requirements they also develop uh, some solutions on top of our PaaS platform and uh, provide that to you as a customer as an out-of-box kind of PaaS application where you actually have flexibility to use that out-of-box functionality. And in addition uh, to that, you even have uh, a flexibility to further develop that to whatever other usage or functionalities you might, might need. But yeah, SaaS, it's pretty much a standard functionality to what the business function you're trying to serve. It, it needs to further develop, but we have made that usage uh, very, very easy for you and uh, much less resource and time consuming for you. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you for that. If you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. There are questions at this time. I would like to hand the conference back to Dipanshu. Please continue. Thank you. And by the way, I am just amazed. Uh, it's 21 minutes over uh, the scheduled time, and we still have uh, still have your attention and your asking questions. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough for that. I know we started a little bit late, and I really appreciate every single one, every single person's. Uh, um, and uh, attention and uh, support to uh, make this a successful webinar. For any further questions, um, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, our team will send you the contact details. Uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us or your account manager or our Evosis team to ask any further questions and uh, discuss your specific unique requirements. Um, and I uh, will be very happy uh, or rather be excited to, uh, to help. Thank you much once again. Everyone has a great day and great rest of the week. Uh, hopefully we will uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude our webinar for today. Thank you for participating. You may all disconnect.